What's up, freaks? This is Steve with Steve Says, episode number 79. Today we're talking all about freedom, having control, evolution, and a freaking revolution. That is what we're talking about today. This, this today might be the most personal, real, raw episode yet, but it's probably what you might need to hear at this point in your life with all the crazy shit going on in the world. It's probably what you need to hear. So you don't want to miss this. This is going to... This is going to take a few minutes, but just stay tuned because you're not going to want to miss this. And let me tell you, Steve says what it's all about. This is episode number 79. This because, listen, some people will hate, but most can relate to the things we talk about, the way that we operate here. We are always bringing the fucking fire every second of every second. That's what this is all about. This week, I want to ask you a few questions, and we're going to get to that throughout this, this next 20 minutes together. Are you in control of your own decisions? Are you in control of your own mind? And are you in control of your freaking life? Like that's that's some serious questions you need to ask yourself, some reflection that you need to have throughout your day, throughout your life. Now, if you haven't tuned in to Steve Says before, Steve Says is a live show on how to have a no excuses, a no excuses, badass mindset guiding you to adapt, overcome, and destroy the obstacles that are preventing your success in your health, your fitness, your family, and your finances. And I want you to remember that as we're going through what we're talking about today. It's how to adapt and overcome destroying the obstacles, preventing your success in your health, your family, your finances, and of course, in your fitness. So that you could stop being a little bitch and and get your shit together and start living life on your own freaking terms. No one else's terms, but your own. That's just how we approach this every week. And this week, topics are, are, are really living up to that that's those standards more than ever so i suggest you stay tuned and because it's probably something you need to hear probably some things you need to hear we're always focusing on the mind the body and your business and in that order mind body business because it's all about having an rmm a role model mindset how to operate with discipline energy confidence action and just being your freak self that's what we do on this show every week and this week more than ever that's exactly the approach that we're going to be taking. It's all about adapting and overcoming. And let me tell you this, now more than ever, let, let's, just, let's just roll right into it. And, it's, and it, might get a little, it might get a little ugly. Now more than ever, you need to take control of your life. You need to rewrite the narrative. You need to take control of the narrative of your life. You need to make the decisions, not the government, not the state or the county or the little town that you're from. They cannot make your decisions in your life. You need to take control of your life. You need to create the narrative and you write the chapters that are coming up next. Not letting someone else determine it and and sit and wait. And that's exactly what we're doing at Peak Physique. We are not letting, and and all the other businesses that that I run, we're not gonna let the government or some, some dipshit that's got their head stuck up their ass on whatever level, a local level, a town level, a state level, doesn't matter, doesn't matter, doesn't matter who. This is not a political thing. I'm not gonna let those kind of people, and you shouldn't, let them tell you how to run your business and try to ruin your business and tell you how to run your life. They tell you how to think, how to eat, how to walk, how to talk, when you're allowed to blink your motherfucking eyes. Hell no. This is all about freedom. Freedom to live life on your own damn terms. To march to the beat of your own drum. That's what it's about. And now before we really get into the meat of what we're talking about today, I want to address something. I want to address the haters. I've been told that there's haters out there. There's haters out there. Steve, there's haters out there talking shit about you on MySpace and all over the internet. Well, first of all, I don't care. I don't care. It doesn't matter. People ask, what are you going to do about it? People are talking shit about you. Well, I don't even know about it because guess what? The greatest piece of social media that's ever been created is the block and delete button. Like I'll go on local, those local groups, those community groups, and you see all the nastiness. You see the um, people using the, the craziest going on in the world to become the, the, the nastiest version of themselves. They use that as an excuse to become the nastiest version of this, themselves. I don't even know the people that I see it. I automatically just block, block and delete them. Even though I don't even know them. They're not even talking to me. I just see it. I don't need to see that shit, that negativity on my feet. So haters, haters are talking about you. Who gives a fuck? Are you gonna make your decisions based on some haters that you don't even know exist because you block and delete? Does that even matter? And 
it, that, that it doesn't matter. Like again, that is the greatest invention on social media. So what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Oh my God, those those haters. I see it on those groups, those community groups. People talk so much shit about each other on there. It's disgusting. It's disgusting human nature. So people ask me, what are you gonna do? There's haters out there. First of all, if there's any haters, get to the back of the motherfucking line because there is a long line and you need to get the back of it. But those are the ones that get me up at 3.45 in the morning every single day, seven days a week to just keep marching freaking forward, to stay focused and disciplined. And, and, and to stay disciplined. And what am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? I'm gonna keep moving forward. I'm gonna keep transforming minds, transforming bodies and lives. Making an impact, not just on the local area anymore, but the whole fucking world, globally. Not just a small little town or whatever. Why, why hold yourself to those restraints? And we're gonna get to that in a second. But you know what? When it comes to those, those people, even on those groups, they're nasty, they're disgusting. But my answer to that is, oh well, that's just humans being humans. They're just emotional creatures. Some people just happen to be weaker humans than others. They happen to be weaker at controlling their emotions than others. So what can we do about it? They, some people just have no control, no reason, no judgment, and especially no integrity. So what, who, it's just a human being a human. You can't be mad at humans for being what they are. It's a human. That's part of being human. Who gives a fuck? Someone's talking shit. Someone's a hater. Oh my God. Get to the back of the fucking line. Wait your turn, sucker. Because you can't be mad at humans. You can't be mad at humans. We're all human. We've all slipped up. We've all lost control of our emotions here and there. It's just some of us are capable of being adult-like about it, and some of us maybe not so much. Whatever. Whatever. What's next? What's going to happen next? All you can do is laugh and say, there goes another human acting all human again. All oh, those damn humans acting all fucking human again. Because any situation, any situation is only as bad as your reaction to it. Any hater is only bad. As it doesn't even exist if you don't. If you just are blocked out, if your mind is a fucking fortress, is a citadel that that stuff can't even penetrate. Who gives a fuck? It doesn't matter. And here's the funny part about haters, because I've had my share of haters over the last been in business in in, in this county, in Rockland County, for 17, 18 years, going on 18 years, an actual physical location for over 11 years. Had my share of haters. Of course you have your share of haters. We've been dominating the fitness and nutrition and weight loss industry for so long. And of course, when you're perched on top, you're gonna have your haters. But you know what the beauty of this thing is? No matter what the situation is, you always find a positive. You always take everything and find a positive out of it. How can you, what can you learn from this? I get so much material in all the speaking engagements I do all over the country and all the coaching clients that I have all over the world, I get so much material in those speaking presentations and lessons and stories and examples of the different haters and different situations, I never run out of material. I always have content. It's just automatic because it's just there. It's like, wait to hear about this one story. So I appreciate the hate. It gives me so much more co content to just keep driving forward. So much more content to teach people around the world about the small-minded, puny little people that might be out there. I never run out of topics. I never run out of stories to share. There are literally, listen to this, get this. This is, this is almost funny. There are literally tens of thousands of people that have heard some pathetic details of some of the haters out there in small little towns. Because it's, I've used it as teaching lessons. Use it as learning lessons. Think about it. Let me tell you this one story that happened maybe about a year and a half ago, two years ago, before I ever moved to California. So I'm in the Palisades Mall I'm in the Palisades Mall at the online with my two children, a boy and a girl, Tyson and the Midge. We're online in this halal store. The, the halal store, they, they have like the, the beef and the chicken. The, the stuff is good. I don't know if they're still open. I don't know what the situation is there in the mall and with the restaurants, whatever. But this is a couple years ago. So I'm online there and I'm looking at the menu, talking to the kids behind me, but I can see the person standing next to me acting very strange. I just, you know, you, in the corner of your eye, in your peripheral, you feel that weirdness that body language and the eyeballs on you but trying to avoid you, hoping you don't see them, but they're literally standing three feet from me. And I, I, you can tell it's a woman and a man. That's fine, whatever. So I look over and what do you know? It's one of the people that maybe a year prior to that was talking shit about my children on Facebook, talking shit about like my five-year-old daughter, 
like trashing them on the internet. I don't know about it. I only know about it because people tell me about it because I block and delete motherfuckers. So there I am sitting next to this individual at this restaurant. And guess what it's all about? Guess how it went? Oh, hey, Steve, how you doing? How's the family? So good to run into you. It's so great to see. I hope you're doing well. I see you on Facebook. It's so amazing the things that you're doing and helping so many people. You're such an awesome individual. High five, buddy. That's what I get when I run into in person. That's what I get. And the funniest thing about it, listen to this, and I'm not done with the story. So there's two people there. One of them is this, you know, one of that, the one I'm talking about. Standing next to them is their boss from work. Their new, their new boss from they just got a promotion at work. So now imagine, imagine I was uh, lower myself down to the scumbag level of some of the haters. What I could have done there is said, well, you know, now that you mention it, my family's doing great, but I really didn't appreciate you talking shit about my wife and my five-year-old daughter and all the nasty things that you were saying about me on the internet. I didn't really appreciate that. Can you tell me what that was all about? Why were you doing that for like a month straight? Right next to their boss. I could have done that if I was like a douchebag, but I don't even care because I just block out the nonsense. Like, who gives a fuck? I said, the family's doing awesome. I wish you well. I hope you're doing well. Although they might have gained a lot of weight. And ask them, listen, if you need any help with your fitness and nutrition weight loss, send me, a, send me a message. Send me a text. Give me a call. We'll still help you out. I could have sitting there and flipped it a totally different way and played the scumbag route. But what's that going to do for me? What's that going to do for me? Except say, ha ha, or whatever. You stoop down to the level of a loser. Listen, let me tell you. The great philosopher Jay-Z once said, never argue with a fool because people watching from a distance can't tell who is who. And if you know me, and if you've been following for a while on, on social media, you know that I love my quotes. So whenever I find a quote that I, that I like, I'll dig to the roots of it. So I dug that quote a little deeper to see where it originally came from. Went, went back to Mark Twain. Mark Twain said, never argue with a fool because onlookers may not be able to tell the difference. And I dug deeper and deeper and deeper onto that quote because I knew there had to be more to it. It went back 2,000 fucking years ago, all the way back to the Bible. It said, do not answer a fool according to his folly or else you will be just like him. And I'm not the most religious person, but you can learn a lot of things from anywhere. You got to be open-minded. 2,000 years ago, they were preparing you for the scumbag haters on fucking Facebook and wherever else the roaches show up. So, you know, that leads to, you, you can't go into the stupid to that level because that would, then you wouldn't be living your best life if you were stooping to the scumbag level. I could have done that in that, in that halal place, this individual, but there was no need to, I don't care. It's not affecting me. I think someone's words affect you and your life because they're talking on some on community group. I see it with the nastiness going on. People don't even know and I blocked them. So how am I doing? How am I doing? I'm doing fucking awesome. I'm living the life of my dreams is what I'm doing. And one of, one of the businesses that I am involved with out in California called The Project, where we have people come in from all over the world, now five different countries have come in and joined these personal development programs. We have what's called the four F bombs. Family, fitness, finances, and faith. So how am I doing? That's how I judge how am I doing. Family, fitness, finances, and faith. And let me tell you, None of those could be better at this moment. None of them. Every, well, let, me, let me say, everything can always be better. You can always improve on them. But think, like anyone who doesn't think that life is fucking awesome because if you're locked down in your home and this and that and you're stuck with your kids and whatever else it is, listen, you're in your house that you work and you probably pay like 50% of your, your salary for your house and all the shit in your house and your utilities and all this other stuff, you bust your ass at work to pay the bills for your fucking house that you pay a mortgage or rent or whatever the case is to send complain when you're in your house for a couple of weeks, a couple of months. Around your kids that are your children and complaining that, oh my God, I'm stuck with these little kids. You should be saying, thank fucking God I am stuck in this house that I'm able to pay for. Thank God I have time, more time to spend with my kids to get to know me so I can stop being that douchebag out there maybe on Facebook and Instagram and all these other places. Thank God this happened. Well, as horrible as, as, as viruses are and all this other craziness going on in the world, as horrible as that shit is, thank God this happened. I could maybe actually learn to be a role model to my kid. Or I could just use it as an excuse to be the worst version of myself rather than use it as an excuse to improve myself. And listen, so when it comes to the fitness side, you can't go to the gym right now. There's no equipment available out there to buy. 
The, the government will tell you you can't go to the gym. The government will tell businesses they can't open. Create your own home gym. Stop making the bullshit excuses. Take control of your life. Stop sitting and waiting. I have people still telling me, oh, we're going to wait till the gyms open up. It's now we're going on month five. Month five. Think about that. And you're going to wait till the gyms open up. What if it's another five months? Are you going to keep decaying and keep digging yourself deeper and deeper in the hole? Deeper and deeper into, into depression? and more anxiety, and more struggle? Think about it. Is that where you're with, the, with the direction that you're gonna be going? It's crazy. And then the reopening restrictions, once they open up the businesses, they, they, they structure it so that you, it's impossible to even be successful. Like, why would you wanna do it? No timeline. And when you're just sitting there in a waiting pattern, in, it's just like in combat. No decision is a decision. Just sitting and waiting is a decision to do absolutely nothing and let someone else control your fucking destiny. What you need to do in all situations and what we've done at Peak Physique is to let your decisions develop the situation, not let the situation develop your fucking decisions. Like you need to be decisive and make shit happen on your own terms, marching to the beat of your own drum. They, they, they opened up, this is what happened. This is why we made some decisions to just go completely virtual at Pig Physique. It was, I don't remember what night it was, I saw an article about that this area of New York is opening up, you can get a massage, you can get your, your, your crotch shaved by another human, you can go to the liquor store, you can go to the bar only if you buy food when you buy your alcohol, only if you buy food like a cheeseburger or probably some unhealthy shit, only if you buy some food can you get alcohol. Strip clubs are reopening, but they said gyms are not reopening. I saw this little update from the great leaders that we have in this area. I saw this update and, and no shit. About six hours later, I was on a fucking plane from California to come here to New York. I said, you know what? I am going to be in control of what my decisions. I am going to make my decisions. I'm done letting other people just make us sit and wait. And, and think about it. Then think about how many people die of car accidents and heart disease and drunk driving. Think about the other shit going on in the world, like the, the child trafficking that just gets ignored. Because I know a couple of awesome veterans who run some organizations that try to combat child trafficking. Think about smoking cigarettes. I can walk into a store and have some douchebag blow smoke in mine and my kids' faces into their fucking lungs. And that's okay, but opening gyms is not okay. Check. Got it. Strip clubs. Some naked bitch could go dancing around a pole, slide all her fucking diseases up and down a pole, but gyms can't open. Liquor stores can open, but gyms can't open. Someone could go get their, their crotch freaking shaved, but gyms can't open. It's enough of it. It's, this is, this is a, a decision. This is a freedom decision. Like, and let me tell you this from, from another side of this. Even with all the ridiculous rules and the way that shit is all totally sideways in this in the in the local area about the way they're op opening whatever 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 right? If going completely virtual online and closing a physical location, if that's going to save even one life from a virus, if there's a potential to, then to me, it's absolutely fucking worth it. I can always stand back up. We have four, five set other businesses that have been funding the gym now for five months. We could keep going on and doing that for another six months, another year, and let them just keep us shut down while, while, while Barbie and, and freaking Miss Pussycat are sliding up and down the fucking pole, spreading their nastiness. We could just keep doing that and, and, and funding it from other businesses. But you know what? I can always bounce back up. I can always figure it out because nothing will ever hold you back. I can always figure it out. I could just go all in online like we're doing and explode shit online and make an impact over the whole fucking globe and not just a small local area. I could do that and get back on our feet and stay on our feet and stand fucking tall and strong on our feet. But someone who dies of Corona, unfortunately, cannot get back up. So if thinking of it from that perspective, like that's how you always gotta find every single bit of positivity you can from it. If that means, if going completely virtual means I can help people now all over the fucking globe like we're doing. And at the same time, if one person can be spared from getting sick and dying from the virus, fucking worth it. Although I guarantee 
that fitness centers just being open. Say, let's just say gyms never closed down through this whole thing. I guarantee the amount of people that went in there that got stronger, stayed positive, more motivated, had more energy, strength, endurance, boosted the immune system, metabolism burning like crazy, staying positive here, guarantee there'd be 10 times more lives saved than any virus can ever take. I guarantee it. Guarantee it. So when it comes to the whole corona and all this, as, as horrible as it's been with, with the, the tragedy that it's been, you always have to figure out, all right, this has been a blessing. That's why you need to think of it. Because every obstacle becomes your opportunity. It forced us to go online with our training, which opened up the doors to explode all over this country. It, it built up online training and be able to reach people from all over parts of the globe, led to companies hiring us to go do special events and doing these beach workouts. If you saw a beach workout, we just, there was, it just made on Sports Center. One clip, about, there was about 50, 60 guys we were doing a special event on the beach, Newport Beach, California. There was a clip on the Sports Center, on ESPN Sports Center. There was over close to almost 500,000 likes on this little 15 second clip and three to four, four million views or something like that by now. I don't know how many by now. Three to four million views, 500,000 likes on a little clip that wouldn't have been done if it wasn't for Corona. So you have to think, like, find the blessing in everything. Everything is, in, is in, in, every obstacle becomes that opportunity. Because when it comes to online coaching, and not just the, the group training that we do, the bootcamp boxing, doing PC, it's just online coaching in general that we've, have, we've gone to, it's fucking booming. It's exploded. Because it's, it is time to grow, not be held back by the fucking, the low, your local government or whoever that has no clue what they're doing. Peak physique is officially gone global. That is the plan, a global plan. We already have fitness and one and personal training and peak performance coaching clients from 17 different states and five different countries right now online. That never would have happened if it wasn't for the quarantines, if it wasn't for the lockdowns, if it wasn't for our great leadership and government shutting down fitness businesses while they keep the strip clubs open, it never would have happened. So even in that, you find the blessings. It's caused really the business to explode in so many other areas and regions that it never would have happened if it wasn't for that. We're, we're doing one-on-one -on -one peak performance coaching where it's one-on-one -on -one coaching with high-end clients. With one-on-one -on -one personal training, we're doing still online. Live group training sessions on Zoom, live sessions on Facebook. Of course, we're still, we're still doing free boxing, streaming on Facebook every single Thursday. That's now been going on for over 11 years and it's not stopping anytime soon. We have a peak portal that's like the Netflix for fitness, nutrition, personal development, your mindset, getting your shit together. It's like a Netflix for that. There's a, it's like 700 hours of training on there with, with workouts being added every single day. It's just booming. It's exploding because of the corona. So we will go virtually, fully virtual. Because listen, we've been in business in Rockland County for over 17 years. The goal was to change and impact 20,000 lives, which we far surpassed several years ago. Several years ago. And this time is exciting right now. It's fucking exciting. Because without this time of adversity, we never would be where we're at now. We wouldn't have had the opportunity to change now the mindset and change the thinking. 20,000 people. People say, oh, you're fucking crazy. It's never going to happen. That's been long past. Now the new goal, fuck 20,000. The new goal is 20 million people. Because that's the direction we're going. Broadening. Going big, bigger, not thinking small-minded, not being surrounded by small-minded fucking people. And we're going to get into this even a little deeper, so just keep staying tuned. Keep staying tuned because we're going to talk about that, about the small-mindedness and, 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 letting, and freedom and freedom and controlling your own fucking life, controlling your own mind, controlling your decisions. We have, we have been here for 17 years in Rockland County doing business. Throughout this entire lockdown and all this other stuff, we have... You obviously have to pay rent. You have to pay your entire staff if you don't want to, if you want to continue servicing the clients, which we've done. We didn't miss a single day. This is going into month number five now. And we can continue to keep doing this for another six months, another year, because we're prepared. But that's on someone else's terms. That's on, a, on someone else's terms, controlling your destiny, controlling your decisions. No fucking thank you. 
gave it a shot. Not working, boom, we're gonna change. We're gonna go a different direction. We're gonna make it happen somewhere else under our own control. And I, and, I, and I challenge you to think that way in your own life, in all areas of your life, your personal life, mentally, physically, emotionally. That's the way you need to be thinking in all areas of your freaking life. So we will be all in online. We'll be supporting the coaches, whether they wanna continue, whether still continue training online or going and, and doing whatever else they wanna do. We will fully support them, help them out and help them grow. Because again, in the project, one of our points of the creed we have in the project is leave others better than you found them. So that is always the goal, leave others better than you found them. So I hope you're taking notes and you should be writing some of this shit down because it will help you and it will change your life and it's gonna get even deeper in a second. So when it comes to continuing and, and online training and all this other stuff, let me tell you, all I've been doing, bless you, all I've been doing is taking our online session by self. And I'm only able to make maybe 20% that I actually do live and the rest, I just go into our portal, our membership, our, our private membership website, and I just do the recordings. And I'm, I've gotten in the best shape of my fucking life doing the peak recordings. Because that's what it's all about. And you should hear some of the stories that we hear from either previous members or members or people that just are wait, sitting and waiting. I'm gonna sit and wait and see. I'm gonna wait it out. Wait till the gym's open. Do this and that. You should hear the stories of depression of sadness, of fucking unhappiness, miserable and with their family, miserable with their own fucking kids. It's like, not much that could get me upset, but shit like that will get you upset. Someone saying, I wish. You heard this, I was having a discussion with Tyson just, just last night at dinner about I wish. Someone said to me, or this, well, you're in California, they told me. I wish I, I, wish I was in California. You have palm trees in your backyard. I wish I could be there. So instead, hmm, let me think. I'll talk shit about you and say you must be an ass because you busted your ass for 20 years and you're living the life of your dreams. You're living in California. You have a fucking palm tree in your backyard. So let me talk shit about you instead. How about this? Grasp this. Grasp this concept for those simple-minded people out there. If you see someone that you wish you were doing some things they were doing, talking shit about them is going to bring you further away from getting to that level. What you should do is sit the fuck down, shut the fuck up, raise your hand in the air, and say, hey, show me, teach me. Like, how, how are you gonna, how are you gonna get, and give advice to someone who's where you wanna be? Instead, you're gonna resent them. Tell them what they should be doing, how they should hire, how they should fire, you never hired anything in your life. Think about that. And then, and then people sitting and waiting and seeing for, for their fitness or whatever. Stop making excuses. No excuses. Why fucking tattoo there so I could see it all day long and never forget. Waiting to see gyms open. Those people that are, that are waiting to see gyms open. I'm back here in New York. I've run into several people who've been going to wait. I'm going to wait it out. I'm going to see them wait till the gyms open. Gaining 15, 20, 25, 35 pounds in the last five months. And worse than that, more importantly, they're sad. They're down. They're depressed. They're fucking unhappy. They're digging themselves deeper and deeper in a freaking hole. So I challenge you to do this. Make some bold fucking decisions. Like jump on a plane in five hours and just say, you know what? I'm gonna make the decision. We're gonna do this on my terms. This is what we're gonna do with the business. Not letting some douchebag fucking person in the government tell us what we're gonna do. I dare you to make some bold fucking decisions in your life. I dare you to engage in some dangerous risks that no one else is willing to do. Oh, but the haters, the haters, they're going to talk shit. Who gives a fuck? Who gives a fuck? I dare you to operate with a positive attitude no matter what. I also challenge you to operate with maximum effort in everything you do. You're sweeping a floor. Be the best motherfucking floor sweeper in the world. That's what you need to do. I dare you. I challenge you just to take massive fucking action. Get off your ass. Stop complaining. Stop making excuses. Stop being approval seeking. Stop talking about poor little me. Get off off your ass and make shit happen. Take a risk. That's, what, that's really what we did when we went, went to California. Drove there with nowhere to stay. No home in California. Jumped in a car with the family. Went to California. Just because that was the bold decision to make. That was the risk to take. Because I knew that there is more. There's more things outside a little dome, a little shell that you're stuck in for so long. And the same thing coming back here now, a year later. 
just jump me on a plane, flying to New York to make the decision, to make the changes in the, in the business and the company, to go bigger and broader and better than ever. Instead of worrying about the government and wait and see and the rules and this and that, the bullshit and the fucking lies and all that other dumb shit. Oh, but the haters, the haters. Who gives a shit? Who gives a shit? This is the mindset that you need to have. And you need to re-listen to this if you need to. This is the mindset you need to have all the time, no matter what. An old, I think it was a colonel in the Marine Corps at one base I got to told me, the very least I expect of you is the very best of you. Imagine if you held those standards yourself every day. That there is no minimum fucking standard. That the minimum standard is to expend maximum fucking effort at all times. There are no bad days. There's only great and fucking awesome days. That's all there is. There is no such thing as doing more than is expected of you. If it's something that needs to be done, then it's just already fucking expected. The, like, people think about, all right, going above and beyond, right? Above and beyond. I'm gonna do more than is expected. I'm gonna do, so listen, listen. This is a total sidetrack, just a thought. If something needs to get done, and you went and did it, you spent your time to do it, like at your job, in your business, whatever it is, then put it on your fucking regular list of responsibilities, your regular checklist, and get it fucking done. And don't look around for that shiny star sticker to be placed on your chest because, hey, I did what should have been done anyway, but it wasn't on my checklist. Well, put it on your fucking checklist. There's no such thing as above and beyond. There's no such thing as extra credit. It's shit that should have been done anyway. That's what you need to be thinking. That's what you need to operate. Going above and beyond is the basic fucking standard. It's the price of admission to play in a world of ass kickers, of high performers, of maximum efforters. Don't care if it's not a word. So I challenge you to bring the fucking fire every second of every second. If we have one of our core values right up here on the wall, if you're always on your A game, you never have to get on your A game. No matter what happens, no matter what the situation brings to you, doesn't matter. Doesn't freaking matter. And here, let me tell you this. It doesn't fucking matter with lowlifes and the scumbags and the haters and the drifters out there that are just drifting up, swaying around, like the douchebag told you in the, in the halal that they could've, I could have just made a big scene in front of their boss, which didn't, because you don't jump into the fucking mud with, with a dirt bag. Just think, it doesn't fucking matter with those drifters that don't matter, think of you. And you should re watch this shit, because probably some of the shit's like, yeah, I need to fucking apply that in my damn life. Or you need to tell us to someone who needs to apply in their damn life. You need to have a bias for action, for making shit happen. Making bold fucking moves. Taking risks. Take shit. Take more risks in a week than most people take in a lifetime. That's how you get shit. That's how you get shit done. That's how you grow. That's how you move forward. That's how you have success. That's how you get a palm tree in your backyard that people want to hate on. Like, it, follow the success. Don't resent the success. Learn from the success. I'm shit. I saw people several years ago that I, I saw that were doing things that I wanted to be doing one day and I was far off from. Imagine I was a dumbass and like, oh, you should be doing this. This is how you should be selling. This is how you should be marketing. Imagine I did that to them. They'll be like, shoo, go away, little boy. Shoo, shoo, child, go away. That's what they would have said to me. No, you know what I did? I shut the fuck up. I sat the fuck down. I raised my hand in the air and not only said, can you help me? How much can I pay you to fucking help me? Is what I said. I will pay whatever the price of admission is for you to teach me, to help me. And I will implement like a motherfucker. That's what I'm gonna do. Take the risks. Tune out the perspective and the advice of the weak, the futile, the uninformed, the fake fraud motherfuckers who have never done shit, never created shit, never tried shit, never accomplished shit, never risked shit. In the words of the great big pun, go that away. Go that away. Get the fuck out of here. Shoo, little child. Shoo, child. Go away. Make bold decisions that will shock some people. Engage in dangerous risks that no one else will and will take you where they can't go. Have a positive fucking attitude, maximum effort, and massive fucking action. This is a decision about freedom and control, not a financial decision. Take control of your fucking life. You write the narrative of your life. I told you that in the beginning, I'm gonna tell you here at the end. Take control of it. You make the decisions. No government official could tell you, oh, 
You make the decisions. You make the decisions. Again, remember this. Your decisions should develop the situation, not the situation develop your decisions. Would you let someone just take you physically, grab you by the arms and shoulders, and throw you on the ground, and throw you up in the air, and hold you down in a corner, and hold you in a, in a chair, and say, just sit there, don't move, and dominate you like that? Fuck no, you wouldn't. So why do you let people do that with your business, with your fucking mind, with your emotions? Cut the fucking puppet strings and take some bold moves, make some risks. It's all about freedom, living life on your own freaking terms. Because you are fucking awesome. No excuses.